come today to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all his people, to serve the Lord with gladness. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us and not us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth throughout all generations.
Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you altogether, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to you, your mortal bodies, because of the spirit who lives in you. Recite with me the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we continue in worship today, please join us in the reading of our scripture. Today's scripture is Psalms 46, verses 1 through 7. And the word of God tells us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nation raged and the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of God for the people of God. All praise, honor, and glory belong to him. Amen. Amen.
Through the Holy Spirit. 
So we need, if we have a thousand tongues, we can praise you enough. We couldn't thank you enough, Lord God. We couldn't glorify your holy name enough, Lord God. We worship you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, Lord God. You are our everything, Lord God. Our everything. We just love you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for the hedge of protection that you continually form around our lives, around the lives of our family members, for even those who you haven't yet prompted through your Holy Spirit to become one of yours, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for you said that you have promised salvation to each and every one of our generations, Lord God. So we claim that in the mighty name of Jesus today. Every newborn child, every child that's already in the process of being taught your divine word and your precepts, Lord God, we pray that you would just help them bind them in their hearts, Lord God. That they may come to know and to love you as we do, Lord God. We continue to lift up this nation that's immersed in turmoil and dissension. that we seem to be more the divided states of America instead of the, the, the United States of America. Help us, Lord God, to live out our decree, Lord God, that all of us have been created equal and that we are all endowed with the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we know the only way that that is possible is through you, Lord God, through your divine Holy Spirit. Continue to work out your marvelous work, Lord God. For you promised us in your word that in the last days that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, Lord God. So we pray for salvation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you.
gives for setting the atmosphere. Now let's go to the Word of God and see what the Lord has for us today. The scripture that you already heard read was Psalm 46, verses 1 through 7. Um, right now, just allow me to read verses 1 through 3. The Word of the Lord says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surge. Today, I'd like to use as a sermon title, God is. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise your holy name. We thank you for your many, many, many blessings, chief of which is the blessing to worship you, but also the blessing to hear from you. So we ask, dear Lord, that you would open up our hearts, our minds, our very souls right now so that we can receive what you have for us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You Bible readers will know that there's a verse in the Bible that says, Be still and know that I am God. I've often mentioned that scripture in the context of, of not being busy and not being busy trying to, to handle my own issues. And instead of me being busy, me trying to handle my issues, just letting God take care of everything. Be still, right? But there's another way to look at this scripture. Be still. Meaning, turn off the TV, put your smartphone down, step away from the computer, turn off the ringer on your telephone, close the door, turn off the lights, just be still. And while you're in that stillness, get to know God. You see, that's part of what I've been trying to do. A lot of us have been trying to do during this pandemic. This isolation has allowed us to appreciate stillness and then to use that stillness to learn more about God. And, and I'm not talking about what I can learn from a book, not what I can learn from the computer or from a preacher. I'm talking about what I can learn from stillness. You see, because in order to be in a relationship, we got to know God, and we must seek God. And while the more I learn about God, the more I discover that I don't know that much about God, and while the more that I seek God, the more I'm awestruck by the ungraspable nature of God, yet the more that I rest in the stillness of the Lord, the more I understand that God God is. God is the sun, the moon, and the stars. God is the oceans, the seas, the rivers, the lakes. God is the trees, the plants, the flowers. God is the mountains and the valleys. God is the very air that we breathe, the music that we hear, the salt, sweet, the bitter that we taste. God is the cool breeze in a hot day and the mighty wind on a stormy day. God is laughter. God is love. God is happiness. God is peace. God is family. And the more you live, the more you realize just how much God is to you. You see, because one day you're, when you're sick, you'll know that God is is a healer. One day when you're worried, you'll know that God is a comforter. One day when you're broke, you'll know that God is a provider. One day when you're lost, you'll know that God is a shepherd. One day when you're under attack, you'll know that God is a protector. One day when you mess up, you'll know that God is a forgiver. One day when you're sinking deep in sin, you'll know that God is a savior. 
God is. You see, my friends may disappoint me, but God won't. My family may abandon me, but God won't. My job may frustrate me, but God won't. My bank account balance might scare me, but God won't. My hobbies may bore me, but God won't. Because everything I need him to be, God is. You see, who, who else could create the whole universe out of chaos? Who else made the sun, the sky, the sea, and everything beautiful in this world? Who else created you and formed you in your mother's womb? Who else watched over you and kept you from danger seen and unseen? Who else picked you up when you were down? Who else found you when you were lost? Who else took your sins upon himself and died for you? Who else washed you with his own blood, the blood that still works? Who else offers us eternal life? Who else reigns forever? Who reigns forever? Who reigns forever? and evermore. You see, God is our all and all. That's the number one thing that stands out about Psalm 46. Those first two words in verse number one. God is. You see, because we, we spend so much time worrying, being upset about our situations, nerve-wracked about what we're going through, distressed about our outlook, fretting about our circumstances, agonizing about the happenings in our lives. We do so much sometimes that we forget who God is. He's a God who eases our worry and anxiety, removes our fear and trepidations, comforts our pains and our hurts, restores us to wholeness and gives us purpose, blesses us with life and life abundantly. <laughs> because when Moses says that God will never leave you nor forsake you, he's writing that because he knows who God is. <laughs> When David writes, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's writing it because he knows who God is. When Jeremiah writes that you are a God at hand and not a God far away, he's writing that because he knows who God is. When Luke writes that in him we live and move and have our being, he's writing it because he knows who God is. That is my comfort, knowing that God is with me. That is my tender thought, knowing that God will comfort me. That is the end of my hard service, knowing that I can operate with the Spirit of God within me. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We will not fear because God is. When I think, when I think of what God has done to prove himself to us is mind-boggling. You see, it was God and God alone, because nobody else was there. It was God alone who formed and created all things. It was only God that spoke in, the, in those first days of creation, bringing forth light, forming the earth and making it an inhabitable globe in the vastness of the universe where every other planet or heavenly body produced no signs of the ability to support life. And God didn't create the earth to just be another planet in the, in the solar system. This earth was created with one purpose, to be the home of his children who he created. God, God created this world for it a place, for it to be a place that would support life, that have the right climate, the right soils for producing fruit, the right atmosphere for breathing, the right water, enough land to live on, the right amount of heat and light from the sun, and the right gravitational pull of the moon. God alone created all the forces of nature and physics to make this earth what it is, the only inhabitable, inhabitable planet that we know in all of creation. And God wants us to understand 
God wants you to understand that he created all of it for you. You are special. You are valuable. You, yes, you are worthy. And you are loved. God used the immense powers of creation to make something wonderful for you. And just as God did that in the beginning of this creation, created world, God is still doing that today. God is still doing wonderful things for you. God is still using his immeasurable power for you. And not because you deserve it, but simply because God loves you. So when the enemy tries to make you think that God doesn't love you, that God has abandoned you, that God has forgotten about you, that God is punishing you, just remember that God didn't create this whole world for you in order for you to suffer, but for you to thrive, to overcome, and to persevere, and to be victorious. You see, the earth may give way, but who created the earth? The mountains may fall into the heart of the sea, the waters may roar and foam, and the mountains may quake, but who created the mountains and the sea? You see, there's nothing that God didn't create. There's nothing that God doesn't have control over. There's nothing that God doesn't regulate and realign and reposition in order to protect you, to save you, to grow you, to help you, to empower you. And so, yes, God is my strength. God is your strength. God is our strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And refuge, God is our refuge. That is our safety from attack. And strength is the ability to go on attack. See, see we don't have to ever just sit back and watch the devil try to run roughshod over us. We don't have to cower before the enemy. We don't have to shrink and recoil trying to stay out of the devil's way. We have the might and the power and the strength of God within us. The same power that rose Christ from the dead is within us. So we can pray fire from heaven. We can pray healing for ourselves and for our loved ones. We can pray peace amidst the warring peoples around us. We can boldly speak to our situations. We can boldly proclaim what saith the Lord. We can boldly speak life because the power of death and life is in our tongues. We can use faith to move mountains. We can use our faith to open doors. We can use our faith to transform lives, transform homes, transform our communities. God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. We have stood the test. We have overcome the world. We are more than conquerors. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. God is. God is. God is. And yes, we talked about God creating it, this whole world, but, but you know that God is here? You see, God didn't just create all this world and then just walk away. God is our refuge. God is our strength. And God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. You see, this is another thing that I really pray this pandemic has taught us, that God is ever present. You see, the notion about the omnipresence of God can be hard to comprehend. Simply put, God is everywhere at all times. There's no place that God isn't. The psalmist even goes so far as to say that even if I make my bed in hell, God is there with me. You see, so we were always, we were always able to acknowledge the presence of God when we were in here, when we were in the sanctuary. Yes, it's easy to acknowledge the presence of God and, and, and to revere God when we're in the sanctuary. But this pandemic has forced us to acknowledge the presence of God when we're out of this sanctuary, 
We, we all learned that we didn't have to come into the church to experience the presence of God in all of God's fullness. An ever-present help means that we don't have to look for God when we're in trouble. We don't have to look for God when we want to pray. We don't have to look for God when things aren't going right. We don't have to look anywhere for God because God is ever-present, always with us, right where we are, wherever we are. And that's the thing, that, that if we acknowledge that God is always present, then we have to acknowledge that God is present when everything is going wonderful in our lives, when choirs are singing and everybody's smiling and praising and shouting. Yes, God is present in that moment, but God is also present when the tears are streaming down our face. God is present when we're pacing the floor back and forth. God is present when our bodies are racked with pain. God is present when everything is even going crazy in our lives. An ever-present help in the time of trouble. You see, God is, is not a spectator to our suffering, but God actually partakes in our suffering with us. When your heart is broken, so is his. When you are sorrowful, so is he. When someone offends you, he's offended too. When you're hungry and sick, he suffers with you. Our example, of course, is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who experienced everything that we are going through, but even more so because Jesus suffered even to the point of death on a cross. He suffered, he bled, and he died. <laughs> but Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus got up on the third day with all power and authority in his hands. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed. You see, our dread is gone because we've got the assurance of Jesus with us. Our despair is gone because we've got the hope of Jesus with us. Our weakness is gone because we've got the strength of Jesus with us. Our anxiety is gone because we've got the peace of Jesus with us. Our fear, our fear, our fear is gone. Though the earth be removed and though the, though the mountains be thrown into the sea, because Jesus is with us, because God is. I get you, it's hard not to be afraid at what comes at us in life sometimes. And your fear would be valid if, if you were going through it alone. But God is ever present. And God's presence should make those fears subside and even vanish. If we remember who God is, even in the midst of our trouble, we'll have a sense of peace in our lives. And lastly, the psalmist writes, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. No matter what we go through in this world, the joys, the pains, the ups, the downs, the good times and the bad times, no matter how we struggle and strive, battle and brawl, win some and lose some, we have a place where we are going, a place where God is. And out of all the things that God is, the fact that he's preparing a place for us is the best thing about us. It, it, it should bring us joy, and it brings me joy to know that God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. It brings us joy to know that God is going to wipe away every tear. It brings us joy to know that God is doing away with sadness and pain. 
And so we rejoice that God is our refuge and our strength. We rejoice that God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And we rejoice that God is making sure that we have a home to go to be with him forever in all eternity. So it is in my moments of stillness. It is in those moments when all is quiet around me. It's in those moments when all I have are my thoughts of my deep, the deepest parts of my soul and the presence of God with me. It's in the stillness. It's in that stillness that I know without a doubt that God is the joy and the strength of my life. That God removes all pain, mystery, and strife. God promised to keep me, never to leave me. And God will never, ever fall short of his world. I'm going to bless and praise him while I'm walking this narrow way. And keep my life clean each and every day. Because I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never go back. Because God is... <laughs> Yes, God is. One more time, say God is. God is my all and my all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. And one of the things that we have to ask ourselves, who is God to me? Who is God to you? Is your God a mighty God or is your God a weak God? Is your God a loving God or is your God a hating God? And is your God a giving God or is your God a selfish God? I'll say in my life, God is a giving God. And if I want to honor God, then I should be like God and give also. And I pray that you experience God for yourself as a giving God and as such that you want to also give in return. If that is your desire, please go to our website, www.inchurch.org. Once you're there, just hit that donate button and you can give by either PayPal or Tithe. And if you want to write a check, you can do that too. The address is on our website and you can either mail the check to us or you can drop it in our mailbox whenever you're in the area. And please remember that we are still accepting donations for our stained glass windows. If you are able to give above and beyond your tithes and your offerings, please do so. Prove to God that you know God is a giver, because whatever God gives to you, you can give it to his kingdom. And we praise God together for what God is doing in all of our lives. That brings us to the end of our worship experience. We pray that your spirit has been blessed, and we pray that you have a newfound understanding of God. He is your refuge and your strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us blameless in his presence with exceeding great joy, to God our Father, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore.